In this tutorial, I want to talk about the effect that two wave plates stacked in a row, one and two, can have upon an input state. So we're going to start by considering, just as an example, a 1-1 one, one state, a plus 45 degree linearly polarized input state marked here. And I'm drawing both a picture for that and also the Jones vector notation for it, where we have some electric field strength E0 and then a unit vector, which is a 1-1 one, one state. And to normalize that, I have a root 2 in the denominator. So first example, let's consider if both of the wave plates are quarter wave plates. So I'm going to label quarter wave plate here. And I'm also going to label the second one a quarter wave plate. So if we just follow our noses here, a quarter wave plate oriented with its xy axes in the lab frame, that's going to have a Jones matrix of 1, 0, 0, i. And of course, the second quarter wave plate is going to have exactly the same matrix if I've oriented it the same way, which is what we're going to consider here. Then we want to know what the output state is going to be. And I'm first going to talk about what the intermediate state here is going to be. If we just consider what this multiplication is going to give us, it's going to give us an amplitude E0. I don't expect the amplitude to change because I've got a state going through a quarter wave plate, which doesn't absorb anything. And if I do the math of this 100i zero, zero on the 1, 1 state, the 1, 0 times the 1, 1 is going to give me a 1. The 0i times the 1, 1 is going to give me an i. And the root 2 is still there. So intermediately, through one quarter wave plate, as we know, this is going to be a circularly polarized state. One i means the x and y components have equal amplitudes but are out of phase by 90 degrees. The i means e to the i pi over 2. The y component lags the x component by pi over 2. That means x maximizes first. And that means that the polarization at this midpoint is going like this in a circle. So this is the mid midpoint. And then we can look at the end. Same sort of approach. We operate 1, 0, 0, i on this state. And we're going to get a magnitude of E0. Again, we don't expect any change in overall amplitude. But we'll see if the rest of the math takes care of itself and gives us a unit vector. So 1, 0, 0, i times the 1i state, that's going to give 1, 0 times 1i gives us a 1. 0i times 1i gives us i squared, which is minus 1. And again, there, nothing's happened to that root 2. So we do indeed get a unit vector here. So the amplitude is e naught, And now we have a minus 45 degree polarized state. So the picture up here looks like this. And that's the output. So we followed this whole process through mathematically. One wave plate takes linear to circular, as we knew. A second wave plate takes circular to the other linear, as we knew that it would. And we also know that two quarter wave plates, if they simply were stacked side by side, would have the thickness of a half wave plate, double the Instead of 2 pi over 2 retardances, we can think of it overall as a pi retardance. And we know that an xy half wave plate indeed does take 45 degree polarized light and flip it about the x-axis and make it negative 45 degree polarized light. And we can, of course, see that math directly if we were just to write the two quarter wave plate matrices over here as well as 1, 0, 0, i and a second one again, 1, 0, 0, i. These are these two elements here. And we say, well, what was the total effect of those two? And if you do have the math on this, you got 1, 0, 0, and i squared, which is minus 1. And we can very definitely think of that as a quarter wave plate. 
times a quarter wave plate at the same orientation equals the effect of a half wave plate at that same shared orientation. So this is just a way of seeing both the picture of what's the evolving polarization state, the Jones math of how you do it if you just grind out the math, and then inspecting the interior states, the interior midpoints, to see how everything sort of flows along. This sort of unites the conceptual and the mathematical. So let's do another example. I'll clear this. Okay, let's suppose that instead of quarter wave plates, we had half wave plates. So now we're going to pass our state through two consecutive half wave plates. So the mathematics of this we can write pretty quickly. The half wave plate, if it's oriented in the xy axis coordinate system, it's going to be 1, 0, 0, minus 1. We'll have two of them. And the second half wave plate will have the same matrix. At the midpoint here, we know that a half wave plate operating on this input state, if we just do out the math here, this is going to have an amplitude E naught. This matrix multiplication, I'll do it a little bit more rapidly now since we should be getting used to this. This is going to be a 1 on the numerator and a minus 1 in the denominator now over root 2. And that's a minus 45 degree state. So that's going to look like this. Exactly what we expect a half wave plate to do. If its axes are in the xy plane, it's going to take a plus 45 and mirror reflect it about the x axis to make it a minus 45 degree state. When we then pass through the second half wave plate, we operate 1, 0, 0, minus 1 again on this state. That's going to give us an amplitude of E naught and a state of 1 and then minus 1 times minus 1, which is positive 1 over root 2. So again, no amplitude lost. And the output state is a 1, 1 state. That's a positive 45 degree orientation. So we're back to having a state that goes like this. Once again, it shouldn't come as a surprise that stacking two half wave plates together should give us the equivalent of a full wave plate, something that delays by pi plus pi, that is to say 2 pi. And I won't do it out here, but it's pretty straightforward to see that if you multiply these two matrices together and just ask what's the, co what's the combined influence of the half wave plates, you don't even have to operate it on anything. It's not specific to how it affects a 45 degree state. This these two elements together act as a 1, 0, 0, 1 matrix. Or you can also think of it as a 1, 0, 0, e to the i, 2 pi matrix. A 2 pi phase delay of the y component relative to the x component, which is to say no delay at all compared to a zero delay, it's two pi is the same as zero. So once again, we see that half wave plus half wave equals full wave. And this is going to be true no matter what input state you send in, you're always going to get the same input state out. Let's lastly consider one case where the two wave plates have their axes twisted relative to each other. So I'll clear the screen again. So in this last case, let's consider that we have two quarter wave plates again. But the second one is a rotated quarter wave plate where the, the x and y axes have been exchanged. We've rotated it 
by 90 degrees so that the 1 and i axes are now the i and 1 axes. So the math of this is that the first quarter wave plate will have a matrix 1, 0, 0, i. The second quarter wave plate will have a matrix i, 0, 0, 1. Do the same sort of analysis. If we think about what that intermediate state is going to be, it's going to have a magnitude E0. We've already done this. We, we know that this is going to be a 1i state. So that's going to be circular, like we've seen before, like this. But now when we consider the effect of the second wave plate upon the, this state, we see that the i times the 1 and the 1 times the i are going to give us same values for the x and y component. We're now going to get i and i over root 2, which is the same thing as writing e naught times, I'll write that i as e to the i pi over 2 to emphasize that the 90 degree phase, global phase shift and then this is just a one, one state properly normalized. So we've now picked up a global phase on the output state, but its polarization, the relative polarization of, e, of x and y, is 1, 1, just like the input state was. So the output state now matches the input state. And that's exactly what we would expect. If you have two quarter wave plates, one of which delays y relative to x by a quarter cycle, and one of which delays x relative to y by a quarter cycle, you're going to get a net effect of no delay between the x and y components. And that's what's reflected here. You can undo the effect of the first quarter wave plate with the second quarter wave plate. Just to emphasize that math again, that it's, the fact that it's unaffected doesn't matter what you send in, we can just look directly at the product of these two states and you can see that if you do the math out on this, you get a matrix I, zero, zero, I for this product here and that's just I or E to the I pi over two times a one, zero, zero, one matrix and that matrix there is what we would call the identity matrix. So indeed, any quarter wave plate can be undone by another quarter wave plate if for some reason that's what you wanted to do. We've considered three examples of what it means to pass through two wave plates, either of the same type or of different types. These are often important in optical systems. For instance, if light reflects off of a mirror and goes through an optical element that it just passed through before it entered the mirror.